Hi everyone, my name is Tyler Oakley and it's the end of the year, end of the decade. Wow, we made it. Another year in the books. Can you believe it? The last time I did a Q&A, it was I think in January. It's been a minute. So I figured why not sit down, hang out with y'all, catch up, answer some burning questions and give you guys the scoop. Now before we jump into any questions, I gotta say thank you to Showtime for sponsoring this video. Okay, first question. Robert says, what do you have to ask us, Tyler? Honestly, I'm gonna ask you for a favor. Don't be weird about it, okay? <laughs> All I'm about to ask is YouTube changed how they do things and apparently subscribing to somebody is not enough anymore. Back in my day, I swear to God, you could just click subscribe, you would see the shit, you would watch the videos, good to go. But now you have to click the, like, the bell button in addition to subscribing. So if you haven't clicked the bell button, apparently that's the only way you can see my stuff. And sometimes I see people tweet like, where have you been? I haven't seen any new videos. I wish you still uploaded. I wanted to be like, I upload every Tuesday for 12 years. So if you haven't yet, click the little bell button right there. You can just click it. It's not that big of a deal. I would love you forever. That's what I'm gonna ask you. Thank you. B says, what is your favorite item in your apartment? That is hard. Oh, I do have a thing. I'm gonna go show you my thing. So this thing was a housewarming gift at my last home from the one and only Hannah Hart. She gave me this box of matches that I keep in my guest bathroom. And it says, I pledge to lead by example to be true and brave. And it's all like rickety by this point because I've had it for years and years and years. But I don't wanna get rid of it because I really love it. Because every time I see it, it reminds me to be the best version of me and it also reminds me of Hannah Hart which always brings me joy. So I think this might be my favorite thing and I'm not gonna lie I'm not sure if this is like what I would grab if my home was on fire. Maybe I would grab my box of wigs but I like this too. Hot Top Twink says how do you feel about clams on pizza sir? Now as somebody who often gets yucked for my yum of pineapple on pizza I should be inclusive of your concepts of what should go on a pizza, but clams on a pizza bitch, no, I don't think that's the thing. That's not right, that's not Christian, that's not okay. You do you, but find God. Have you stayed in contact with the guy from Grinder that smelled your feet? Diego. <laughs> Well, no, I haven't. So if you're watching there, is it you? Diego, hello. <laughs> oh my God, I was about to wave at you with my foot, but I thought. Maybe you don't need that. Diego, oh my God. I don't come into your house and bring up all the boys you used to let smell your feet. I don't know what he's up to. We miss you, foot man. Also, uh, you guys that never read my book probably are like, hey. Eh. This person says, top three tips for maintaining platonic gay friends as a 20 something gay. So correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the issue here is like, when your dating pool is the same as your friendship pool, how do you have meaningful friendships within the gay community? I feel like this is totally something a lot of people struggle with. My pieces of advice would be, have an open mind as to what a relationship can be. Even if you go on a date with somebody from like Tinder or meet up with somebody from Grindr, that does not mean if it doesn't work out sexually or romantically, if that doesn't work out, it's the end of what that could be. Because some of my best friends have formed from like people that I'm like, hmm, we're not a match dating wise, but like I would definitely wanna hang out with you. Have an open mind of what it could be. Another tip I would say is be communicative. The more open and honest and vulnerable you are with what you want, the less time you're gonna waste as far as like people not being on the same page about what their relationship is with you. My last tip is probably how I try to live my life most and that is be nice. It is so easy. I run into so many mean gays that think they have to be mean gays because they think snarky or like rude is a personality trait that makes them cool. It blows my mind you don't have to be mean. When you are nice and inclusive and kind and patient, I think good people gravitate towards you. Corey says, what is the last movie you saw? I saw Parasite. Oh my God. I don't want to tell you anything about it. Do not go Google it. Don't watch the trailer. Don't look it up. Don't even look what genre it is. It was like mind blown over and over. I loved every second of it. It was delicious twists and turns. Go see it. Gab says, what was one of your goals at the beginning of the year and did you accomplish it? I had a goal of trying to learn piano. I have been taking lessons every single week. And while I don't know if I've like, mastered piano. In fact, I could tell you that I haven't. It feels so good. I love every single lesson. I love that I can open up a piano book or see sheet music and try to play it. And that's like a thing I can do now. Honestly, it kind of blows my mind what you can accomplish in one year if you just set aside one hour a week to do it. Imagine if you did one hour a day. Bitch, you could master anything. Harley Grace says, what do you think the most iconic pop culture moment of the 2010s was? <laughs> Easy. <laughs> the Slumber Party Tour. Duh. Sierra says, what was the most crucial moment of the decade that defined how your life is now? 
The Slumber Party Tour. Duh. V says, do you ever just sit around and think about your old fan accounts or even like try and see what they're doing now? I watched the binge cover reveal where I was like a witch and I was throwing a bunch of things in the like a cauldron and I had a moment in it that I really wanted to like have all of y'all's Twitter handles that had like Tyler in your Twitter handle on a shelf and it was like all my ingredients for potions and things. And I remember the day that video went live and all the people that were on the shelf, their Twitter handles were freaking out and it was like, my my heart was warmed. It was like our little thing. It was like an inside joke. If any of you were in that video with your Twitter handle, tweet me what your Twitter handle was and give me an update on your life. Bitch, where the hell are you? What's up? What's the tea? Do you got a man? I want to know everything. Ooh, okay. So this person wants to know, what should I put in my dating profile so that people swipe right on me? Bitch, here is the biggest misconception about online dating. The goal is not to get people to swipe right. The goal is to get the right people to swipe right. So if you want the right people, you should be honest in your profile and talk about who you are and what you're looking for. What you shouldn't be doing is lying and using tricks to get people to swipe right because bitch, you don't wanna waste their time. You don't wanna waste your time. So in your profile, be you, don't lie, say what you want, be honest. Shreya would like to know, what are some of your favorite TV shows right now? Ooh, girl. I am not usually good at watching TV. Like my attention span can't really like sit still for that long, but. I have recently started watching The L Word, Generation Q, and honestly, I'm living. So when Showtime and The L Word, Generation Q reached out to partner with me on making a video, I was so into it because The L Word, it has always been one of the most iconic queer shows ever made and they're bringing it back. So if you don't know, The L Word, Generation Q is basically a sequel to the iconic legendary queer show, The L Word. What I loved about the show is I watched the first few episodes with my friend Raymond who has seen every episode of the original series and he loved it just as much as I did. So it's got original cast members, it's got brand new cast members. So whether or not this is your first time seeing The L Word or you watched every single episode of the previous series, it's got something for everyone. Plus, on top of seeing episodes of the new series early, I got to go hang out at the YouTube space in LA with a whole bunch of cast members from the series and talk to them about the show and what it means to them and what queer representation means to them. So hello. Hi. Congratulations. <laughs> for those people that are maybe new to it, what is The L Word? It's, it's entertaining. Yes. It's sexy. It's about friendship. It's about friendship. Chosen family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Should have been called the F word. <laughs> <laughs> There's still time. It's about two generations of queer life coming together today in 2019 and <laughs> discovering how to be a family together. I think why we're sort of remaking this iconic series is because they opened the door so wide and nothing came in and took its place. It was so like groundbreaking. It was the first, you know, all lesbian show of its time. It showed that like these queer stories have such a marketability and do really well and are really important. So for the young queer people that are watching today, what do you hope they get from the L Word? When you don't see yourself represented, it's hard to kind of see possibilities for yourself. And it's really easy to say things like, you know, you're not alone, and we support you, but to see that really come to life, I think is really important. We're, you know, not only are we telling aspirational, hopefully inspirational queer stories, but in my mind, we're kind of inviting people in to be part of that, to be part of this generation of queer folks and to find someone that you can relate to and a story and realize that other people might go through something similar. When I was growing up, I had no queer representation anywhere. I couldn't find it on TV, in movies. For me, it's so important to have, you know, queer content out there. And the mere fact that it's on television and it's celebrating the whole community, I, I'm so proud to be a part of something like that. The fact that we've had to fight so hard for that right to just represent ourselves however we want to and be with whoever we want to be with. That to me is what I hope they gain from it, is that just let your flag fly. If you could describe the L word with one L word, Ooh. what would you say? Lust. Ooh. I felt that. Lick. Love. <laughs> sure. Laughing. Mm. Luscious. Lively. 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 Mm. Life. Leisha. Life. Oh yeah, Leisha. Life is a really good answer. So if you are looking for a new show to watch that's lusty and lovable and lickable and luscious, I would recommend The L Word Generation Q. I love it and you can watch along with me. Thank you so much Showtime for sponsoring this video and Cast of The L Word for hanging out with me. What a fun day. Okay, so that is all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for an incredible 2019. We still have a couple videos to go, but if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you 
think, hit the bell button, subscribe. Plus, I wanna know what shows or artists or movies or what queer stuff do you recommend that people check out that are looking for representation in media that wanna feel seen? What do you recommend? Put it in the comments below. I'm gonna be reading the comments and checking some of them out. That is all I have for you guys today. Have a good life. I will see you guys next Tuesday. Okay, bye.